Hi, my name is Scott Naismith and I'm a landscape painter. I'm here to talk to you about uh, painting on aluminium. It's a product review from anodized aluminium panels from Jackson's Art. Jackson's is a supplier in the UK and I'll leave a, a link to see their panels in the description. Um, I've been painting on aluminium for a while and it's really been exclusively until recently uh, on aluminium dye bond and I wrote a blog about that on my website I'll maybe leave a link to that in the description as well um, Now why would you want to paint on aluminium? Um, it's very very smooth. It's archival um, and it is rigid uh, but the dye bond gets a bit wobbly when it gets bigger it would need a bigger core let me show you some aluminium dye bond it comes like this you peel off the front of it and you paint on a kind of powdered white surface it's not the actual surface of the aluminium that you get with dye bond it's a coating uh, which does take to the paint but you got to be careful with it and being careful with it is a key to aluminium. It's going to drive you crazy. Uh, you'll be wanting to use watercolour brushes with it. It's so uh, sensitive because it's so smooth. Uh, but what I've done with this uh, dye bond board is I've uh, probably given it about three layers of gesso sanding between layers. Lots of sanding and you still get the smoothness but you get the, the more sort of tried and trusted gessoing to work with. I really like working with the gessoed uh, dye bond now so that's the way I, that I work with it. But this is different. This is Jackson's um, aluminium panels and this is a little sample piece that they sent me uh, to see what I thought of it. Um, so first of all this writing up here it says Jackson's aluminium panel and it's written in fine liner. So fine liner goes on fine, doesn't rub off. Um, I have a piece of charcoal. So if you want to do your initial drawing, your charcoal goes on fine. Compressed charcoal, not willow charcoal. Uh, okay, and this is graphite. So if you draw with pencil, you're fine with pencil as well. And it stays on quite well. Um, obviously the compressed charcoal might rub off a little bit easier than the than the graphite, but it stays on pretty much as well as paper would. Okay, let's just explain what I'm doing here. Acrylic and oil, these two words were written in Copic marker and Copic marker, uh, alcohol-based marker, goes on. I'm not sure I would recommend it when you layer Copic marker. Um, it seems to strip off the previous layer. And the same thing happens with watercolour. You're supposed to be able to use watercolour on these, which is fine. But um, these things are all about uh, layering. And each layer then strips back the last layer. It's not stable enough to then put the next layer on. Avoid watercolour. Probably avoid Copic markers. Um, Okay, let's get on to oil and acrylic. Um, I suspected that acrylic would scratch off. And my suspicions were proved right um, initially. But I think once you wait a good day or so for it to properly dry in, I think acrylic is actually all right. Um, I was going to recommend on this video not to use acrylic because it scratches off. Um, but actually, I was attempting to scratch this with a palette knife. Uh, just before I recorded the video and uh, you can see that it, I'm, I'm not getting very far trying to scratch at that. Okay, uh, let's just a, a little explanation of this. This is a, a graded wash which goes thick about here uh, so it shows the transparency of the paint and as it thins off we see the black acrylic square. A little bit like you see in some labels of tubes of paint. Now, the smoothness of the transition of this was really difficult. It was really difficult to work with and the resultant uh, effect is is pretty pretty rough i could have done a little bit better than that but um it, when it put beside the oil you can see that the oil is a smooth transition it's a lovely 
it, I mean, as soon as you start working on oil after working on acrylics on these things, you think, that's better. I'm at home now. This thing likes oil paint. Use it for oil. I wouldn't say use it with acrylic just because of the control. Uh, less about the fact it's going to scratch off because it pretty much isn't if you do it right. Okay, uh, scratching. I have scratched that with a palette knife before we started and yes it does uh, scratch off. It's, it's a It's something which is the case if you scratch at anything with a palette knife it's going to come off at a hard surface. Because this is such a hard surface it means it's susceptible to scratches anyway. If you build up the paint thick on this surface it then becomes the paint that you're trying to scratch which will be the same on this as it is in anything else. But the adhesion to the surface is the same or if not better than, than say working on, on, on gesso. And, uh, it really takes the paint well. Your washes in oil, and I've tried, uh, this is trying pure turpentine uh, and then a little bit of medium and then pure oil. I've used all three and they all go on really nicely. Whereas with the acrylic, it was beading up. It was really uncontrollable to, to try and put the thin paint where it should go and where it should settle. It was really difficult. Uh, so that's why I would um, recommend the oils. Uh, the whole scratching thing. Um, you just got to be careful, but after you finish your painting, do varnish it um, because that will um, protect uh, the surface of the paint from scratches. Protecting the surface of the paint from scratches is the same with anything. It's the same with a, uh, a piece of linen that this is. Um, but it just, because the linen's softer and it's textured, it's, it's, it's not as susceptible to it. But it's nothing to do with the adhesion of the paint to the aluminium, which is absolutely fine. Um, if, it's as good, if it's good enough for Gerhard Richter, which is where I initially got the idea of painting on aluminium. It's good enough for me. Um, okay, uh, I've got a large piece of aluminium, a big meter by meter, and I've never worked that big on aluminium before, so this will be interesting. I'm going to do it in time lapse. You can have a look at how I manage with a meter by meter piece. One of the extra benefits of working on the, the, the anodized surface is that you're working directly on the metal. You can actually uh, use that iridescent uh, reflective quality um, into your work and the thinner washes it will shine through. Um, it's really weird as well when you start to apply white it appears darker than it is because the reflective surface re kind of looks brighter. You're working on grey here um, so when you apply white you expect it to be lighter uh, so it kind of can confuse your lightest light um, and make you think it's, it's darker, um, but uh, you get used to it. Uh, pitfalls, just if you're going to uh, use it on an easel and you're trying to do the edge of it because you might want to float it in a frame or something, it's difficult to brace in your easel to do that edge and then when you do brace it you risk the thing falling off the easel and if I sheet of this and it's not light I mean it's lighter than the equivalent of board but um, no it isn't light and if it lands on its corner you risk that corner uh, buckling a little bit. That happened with the dye bond uh, a lot more than it would happen with, with this. This is pretty pretty sturdy stuff. Again, link in the description uh, to buy this stuff at, at, at Jackson's Art. M many thanks to them for sending me a sample piece to review for me. Okay, see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.